the iPad, a jack of many trades, a device that can send faxes, take photos, browse the web, print and sign documents, display Netflix, and play video games. Now about the last one, admittedly, I'm not someone that plays games on their mobile devices. My phone barely has any games, and I have a few games on my iPad that I'll be talking about today, but for the most part, all of my gaming is done on the Nintendo Switch. However, while quarantined with COVID-19 for two weeks, I sought out ways to entertain myself in between the migraines and chronic fatigue, and that led me to finally doing a trial of Apple Arcade and taking my non-existent gaming career on iOS devices to the next level. With that said, I thought I'd like to compare the two devices and give my take on what is a better gaming device. Now before I get into the video, I just wanted to kindly ask you guys to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and that'll help my channel grow. I do videos on tech topics, and if you're into that stuff, hit the subscribe button. The Nintendo Switch, in my opinion, is not a home console. I mean, it can be, and that is the whole point of it. It has some duality to it. It can be a great mobile gaming device that is highly portable and easy to entertain you when you're not in your house. Similarly, the iPad and especially the iPad mini is also portable and can be a solid gaming devices when you're at home or on the road. Choosing between the two is a multi-layered decision and I'd like to start with the first one the price. Now, the iPad ranges from $429 and goes up all the way to $1,499. Already, the iPad loses that in the price battle right off the bat if you're only speaking about price points. However, you get a lot more value when buying an iPad and it can do almost any task that a computer can do. The Nintendo Switch, on the other hand, costs $399 and it does 99% gaming and the last 1% is for the YouTube application that no one really uses. Now, to make it specific, the basic iPad costs $329 US dollars and this Nintendo Switch costs $299. For the $30 difference, you can get a portable computer in the iPad that does gaming really well. However, if you save the $30, you get a highly entertaining gaming device, and that's the Switch. I can't forget to mention that the Switch Lite also exists, and it costs $199 for anyone on a budget that does not want to dock their console. Another thing that you should consider when you're comparing the two is the price of the games. This is really important. In Canada, after taxes, the games come out to an eye-watering $90, while Apple Arcade includes unlimited games for just $5 per month. So I have to say that the winner here is a tie, because in the long run, the Switch will actually cost you more, even though it's a cheaper starting point. And that's because the more games you buy, the more money that you're spending, and the games are quite expensive, even if you're doing game trading. Now, let's talk about portability. Both of these devices are highly portable in comparison to their respective cousins. In comparison with the MacBook, the iPad can fit in your side bag or your purse. Whereas the Switch, you can do the same. You barely feel as though you are carrying any of these around. The iPad Air that I'm using for this video weighs in at one pound and has a 10.5 inch display, whereas the Switch weighs in at 398 grams with a 6.2 inch display. Neither of these will break your back while carrying and both have lighter versions such as the iPad mini and the Switch Lite. For my specific devices, I have to give the win to the Nintendo Switch because it's a bit easier to wield than the 10.5 inch iPad. If I'm leaving the house, I can put the Switch in my pocket, whereas with the iPad, I'll need to bring a bag or hold it in my hand to carry it around. So the winner of this one, the Switch. Now let's talk about the gaming experience. To me, the most important part of this comparison is the gaming experience. Now this includes the types of games you can play and the performance. So with the Switch, you have access to classic Nintendo titles such as Mario Kart, Mario Party, Luigi's Mansion, Super Smash Bros, and my favorite game as of late, Animal Crossing New Horizons which by the way, got me through self-isolation. And you also have access to thousands of third-party titles and then a lot of indie games, and I mean a lot. 
There's no lack of games on the Nintendo Switch, and honestly, I find myself spending hours and hours playing games unless I have something better to do like make YouTube videos or sign into my day job. The Switch gaming experiences is what made it one of my favorite purchases of 2019. You can play your games on the go and then dock it and then continue where you left off on your 50 inch TV if you have one. With the iPad, unless you have a dongle or another solution, you kind of must play the games on the display exclusively and let's face it, the games are not Animal Crossing level amazing. Yes, there are great titles like Oceanhorn, Rayman, and others, and they absolutely look amazing. I mean, beautiful. But they don't really compare to the titles that you see on the Switch, simply because the Switch games have a legacy, whereas the iPad games are pretty new to the playing field. And yes, that's a little bit of bias, but really, Mario is Mario. As for performance, my iPad Air 3 crunches through all games with barely any stutter or freezing. It is expected as the internal chips are pretty stellar for doing most tasks. The iPad can also be hooked up to a console remote, which I don't have right now, and you can play your games without interacting with the screen. The iPad battery lasts around 10 hours, while the dockable switch comes in at nine hours. Something to consider is that the iPad battery will actually be shared with other tasks such as Netflix and web browsing, while the Switch battery will be used mostly on games. Remember, 99%. The Nintendo Switch also has great performance and the games run smooth, and I've not experienced any stutters. The screens are very important because it's the gateway to the games, and this is also a tricky multi-layer topic. The Switch screen is a lot smaller than the iPad and has less resolution. The iPad has amazing colors and it's just really high quality. The games look great and does not give you eye strain after playing for a while. However, this advantage changes when you connect your Switch to your TV. Depending on your TV, your experience with the Switch becomes a lot more enhanced and you have a lot more real estate to work with once docked. This gives the Switch the edge over the iPad as nothing beats playing on a huge display when you're trying to beat final bosses. And yes, I know it's stuck at 1080p, but still, bigger is better in this case. The winner, the Switch. Overall, both devices have their merits and advantages. However, the device that you have to choose kind of depends on your lifestyle and gaming style. If you want a device that can do more than just gaming, the iPad is definitely a no-brainer. It can do everything you want it to do. The Switch, on the other hand, is the clear winner if you want something for just gaming. The downside to this all is that the games are pretty expensive on the Switch in comparison to the iPad games and even other console games such as on the PS4 and the Xbox One. You can definitely spend close to $100 on the games, which you can spend $5 per month to get a lot of games on the iPad. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the two. If you have both, let me know which one you like gaming on more down in the comments, or if you're on the fence, let me know which one you wanna decide to go with. For me, nothing beats the Switch for portable gaming, but that might not be the same for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. You just be out.